Hi, everyone. I'm Deborah. I'm a PhD student in machine learning at Harvard University. And today, we're going to talk about how to scrape together a great data set using things you found on the internet. Uh, my path to working with data was a little bit longer than some. I graduated in computer science from MIT. I spent a year living in Cambodia learning about how education translates into job creation, particularly in the technology sector, um, and all the ways that data can affect that. I spent some time working as an early engineer at a software company in San Francisco. And then I decided to quit life and become a PhD student uh, so that I could work on some exciting data-related machine learning projects and see what came of that. So to start off with, we're going to talk about how to build and use a great data set. And there are sort of four main steps here. You want to first define a question that you can actually answer. Second, acquire good data, explore that data, and draw conclusions based on that data. But this is all pretty abstract, and learning with examples is the absolute best. So there's going to be a recurring example throughout this, which is one of the projects that I've been working on at Harvard. And to start with this, we're going to pretend that we are producers. We have some money that we want to invest in some movies, and we want to get a really big return. So we want to know what factors drive the movie revenue. So, but can we actually answer that question? So first, we'll ask, we want to define a question we can answer. So one, what we really want to know is, this movie that I want to invest in, is it going to be a big hit? Am I going to make a ton of money? But we're data scientists, not fortune tellers, so we can't really answer that question. So, but we might be able to reframe the question into something that we can answer. So one example is, uh, what is the likelihood that my movie will be a box office hit, given that it has certain features? Um, likelihood is something that we, that we can answer, given data over an extended period of time. Or we can take a, one, a step even farther back and say, what attributes of a, of a movie are correlated with box office success? And that's more of the question that we'll be trying to answer in this. OK, so next, we've defined our question. And now we want to acquire relevant data. So how do we define this good, relevant data? Um, we want movie that has to do with, we want uh, data that has to do with movies in this case. Um, we want relatively structured data because when we pull it down, we have to you know, put it in some sort of reasonable format that we can use later. And ideally, we want relatively complete data so that we can, can be pretty sure of the conclusions that we're drawing. So where can we find this good data? Some of you are probably thinking the answer is in your title. Duh, it's the internet. And that's true. We can find it on the internet. Specifically, um, there are, uh, specifically there are, um, in this case, we'll probably want, Wikipedia would be a great place, because Wikipedia has these excellent boxes that describe, the, they have a movie title, the director, who stars in the movie, how much the movie makes. And it all is in this nice little tabular format in a box in the corner. So we can pull down that box and pull down that table and extract that data. Um, IMDb is another great one, or Rotten Tomatoes, or perhaps the lesser known box office mojo is another great space. So now we know where on the internet to find the data. But then how do we get the data down? One option is an API. A lot of uh, data sources write an API, which is a set of functions which allows you to extract the data in a reasonable format which you can work with. Um, however, lots of people are not so kind to people like us as to write APIs. And so then we have to write a web scraper to get the data ourselves. Um, and there are two main steps to doing this. One is, um, we make an HTTP request up to the server. We get all of the web page HTML, and we pull it down to our computer. And then we can work locally. And then we make that text queryable so that we can actually do something with it. So step one is make an HTTP request to get the HTML. 
And I have an example for that. So, oh no. Apparently I have an example which uh, I cannot show. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, so, now the issue is, so to start off, we can visit Box Office Mojo, and you can see Box Office Mojo is, uh, is just a table of movies and movie information, which is very easy to pull down. It's nice and structured. It's relevant to what we want to do. Um, Um, and now I am trying to, great. All right, so using requests. Um, first, we can take a look at the URL and that can tell us a lot of information right there. Um, it tells us that we're looking at page one. It tells us that we're looking at release dates. We care about domestic, uh, domestic releases. And we know what year we're looking at. We're looking at 2016. Um, so we import the request library, and then it really is this easy. You can make a call using the requests. So we know that there are multiple pages from looking at it. So we make a call, put the URL in the git call that pulls down the text, and then we're putting it into a dictionary here. Um, so the return object is this large object which has uh, an attribute which is text. We call that, and now we have all the text we need. Um, one important thing to note here is that uh, the time.sleep call, um, lots of times the servers that host these pages want to differentiate whether you are a human making the request or you are a computer making the request. And they do that by checking how quickly you make the requests. Um, and computers can make many requests per second, whereas people usually can't make more than one request per second. Therefore. Um, the sleep call is very helpful in making sure that you don't get blocked when you're doing this. Okay, so now we have all of our text, it's down on the computer, we can disconnect from the internet, and we can start working on it with our data. So next, we want to make the HTML queryable using beautiful super PyQuery. And the way that both of, the, both of these libraries do this is you take some HTML, and then it makes it into a parsable tree. So in, in the case of an HTML file, the parent is the HTML. It has two child tags, head and body, both of which contain an H1 and a P. And then you can make calls on those, like, you know, I want the child of this node, or I want to find all of the p tags. And uh, we'll go back to our example to see that too. OK, so in this case, I'm using Beautiful Soup. And we want to get the top 100 movie titles. Um, so we just take our page text that we got from before, r.text. Um, we say parse this as HTML, and then we can use any of Beautiful Soup's functions on it. In this case, um, we're going to find all of the font tags that are of size 2. Because if you look at the box office results, you can see that these are actually, well, actually you can't because you're only looking at part of the page. But if you could see the entire page, you could see that these are actually a different font size than some of the others. So that's a great thing that we can make that call based on. So now we have this list of all of the font tags. And you can see that they have a lot of really useful information here. We, have, uh, we know that the top grossing movie in 2016 is Finding Dory, which is pretty awesome, given that it just came out. Um, and we can see how much it's made so far. We can see that um, we have all the titles here. We have information about which uh, studios it came from. So specific, but remember, we want to get the titles just for the, this. 
So uh, the 11th item gives us finding Dory. Um, now that we have that item, we can find its child A tag. Um, and then um, when we can get, run the get text function on that in order to get the text. And now we have exactly what we want. Awesome. So now we have done two of our four steps. We have, we've defined a question that, you can, that we can answer. We've acquired good and relevant data. It is down in our Jupyter notebook. Um, and now we're, we can explore the data. So after our extensive scraping, uh, the factors that we were managed to explore were movie budget. And you can imagine that movie budget would affect how much money a uh, movie would make because it would go, maybe if you can buy everything you want and get all of the best actors, your movie will do better. Another is uh, IMDb rating. You would think that the movies that people like afterwards might make more money. Or uh, particular studios, if you make something with Time Warner, is, that, is your movie going to be more successful than if you make that same movie with a lesser known studio? Um, opening weekend, um, another thing you might imagine is people, is uh, movies, a movie might make a lot of money in opening weekend and that might be a very predictive of whether it will make a lot of money over its lifetime. Or maybe people just, a lot of people will go see the movie and they'll tell all their friends that it was horrible and it will end up not making that much money. Um, another is um, how many opening theaters that it, uh, how many theaters the movie opens in. Uh, you can imagine that uh, if you reach some sort of critical mass of theaters, that it might make more money. The other is seasonality, like, do people go to the movies more often around the holidays? Do they go to the movie more often in February? And the other is uh, MPAA reading. So is the movie like G-rated, PG-rated, R-rated, et cetera? So we started out looking at, uh, looking at each of these factors. And to explore the data, we started out with the most basic thing possible. Uh, we just plotted the data. And then we ran a linear regression on it and said, you know, does this seem predictive? So first we plotted the variable that we want to know about is the gross revenue, and we plotted that versus the movie budget. And it looks like maybe there's something there. Maybe the, the movie budget has something to do with uh, the gross revenue, but it definitely doesn't seem to be the, it seems like there's more to the story than that. It's not just movie budget. So we should probably keep looking at our other factors. Another we looked at is the uh, explored is uh, the number of opening theaters, and it looks like the, this is relatively predictive, and particularly something that I thought was quite interesting is it looks like um, the amount of money the movie makes really peaks around three thousand theaters. So we probably when we're financing this movie, we probably want to make sure that there's enough money that we can get it out to about 3,000 theaters and then maybe it'll start making more, potentially. And now the quality rating. I mean, if the movie's high quality, we would definitely think that it makes more money, right? No, actually it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> so we found that kind of surprising and we kept searching. Uh, what about the opening gross? What about that first weekend? Is it important that you do this with a, that you come out with a bang and a splash and everything else that you can come out with? Um, and it seems like there is, like that's, that's pretty predictive. <laughs> um, so marketing is important. Um, and so then we combined all of these into this multivariate regression model. Um, which will probably take more than the course of this talk to explain. However, it is on the internet, so you can follow through the steps there. And then finally, um, we can draw conclusions based on this data. And so just to recap what we found, um, we found that the budget helps, but only a little. 
Um, we found that timing is super important. December is a great release date, um, which sort of makes sense because a lot of people tend to go to the movies around the holidays. We found PG and G-rated movies make more money, which also makes sense. You usually don't go watch R-rated movies in a large group. Um, and that the money, how much you make in the opening weekend is very, very important. So to recap what we did, um, we started out by defining an answerable question, which is what factors affect um, how much money a movie makes. We built a web scraper using the HTTP request library and Beautiful Soup. Uh, we explored the data by plotting it, running some regressions, and looking at what it looked like. And then we used that to answer our questions. Finally, um, I did this project as part of a team. We started, my, some of my group mates didn't want to put their pictures on the internet, so we said instead we would put a picture of our name with our favorite movie star. And that was when I realized that this was going to be an awesome project. <laughs> um, and so then finally, um, where to go from here? Um, when you're building a scraper, uh, it's actually, the building a scraper part is relatively straightforward in the grand scheme of things you could do. It really is just like using the request library to pull down the text, making it queryable, and then accessing the items. The process of actually querying the data can be a much longer and draw, more drawn out process. Um, and analyzing the data, Jupyter Notebooks was re is really, really helpful for this because you can look, you know, run things a cell at a time, look at, what look at what your query actually gave you, and then keep on going recursively down from there. Um, and then we use scikit-learn and stats model for our analysis. And then also just looking at example projects. Um, you can look at our complete project along with our prediction of what makes a Oscar winning movie at the Oscar predictor uh, github.io. Any questions? gave us a great presentation of uh, movie data. I'm wondering if they, are there any other data sets on the internet that you're looking at or are interested in? Um, that I'm personally looking at? Or that you could recommend giving um, uh, Well, it's, it's, I mean, basically anything you want. Once, once you can scrape things. Um, I think uh, Wikipedia is helpful. I mean, you could, you could do something on movies. You could also do things on um, people. Um, Crime data sets are often very useful. Another great place if you just, if you want a pre-clean data set that you don't have to scrape, uh, Kaggle has a lot of great data sets that you can use from previous competitions. Uh, so speaking of uh, scraping any data sets, the other day I was at uh, NBA.com and I was trying to get, I wanted to look at some data and um, in the terms of use it said that these data may not be used for personal or academic use. And I was wondering if you had, well, be, because you know, and you had the sleep function in there too. Um, what sort of care do we need to take about terms of use of the data that are posted on websites? Yeah, I would um, definitely read the terms of use. We actually ran into this with ours as well. Um, IMDB says that they'll prosecute you if you scrape IMDB. Um, we did not scrape IMDB. We used okay. IMDB Pi which is a pseudo API. It gives you functions, which gives you information, but it only takes the information that IMD is IMDB is willing to give you, which is basically everything that is not on IMDB Pro. Um, so they don't want you to be able to get things for free that they want to charge you for. Um, and that was somewhat useful, but it actually ended up being limiting in many ways because they also put a, they force a rate limit on you <laughs> by uh, saying, we're just going to make this really slow. There were actually a lot of analyses that we wanted to do uh, on this data set, particularly with the Oscars data set. We wanted to figure out um, how much it would, how much uh, star power is important. But that involved 
going through lots of stars and making lots of requests. And uh, it was going to take something like two weeks to run through all of those. Um, so yes, I'd say uh, definitely, read, definitely read the terms of use and see if it is legal to use it. Um, if they say that, it, that they don't want you to use it, then uh, you can write to them and ask, given your circumstances, is it okay? But otherwise, yes, read the terms of use and don't do anything illegal. So you mentioned that you had um, it's it could be a challenge to query the the, the data that you have you you've scraped. Um, I was wondering if you had any tips of kind of going going from that stack of HTML to a nice tidy kind of date table of the the information that you're interested in. Yeah. Um I'd say that is 90% of this process, and it's unfortunate that I couldn't have gone into it more here. Um, I really like uh, IPython notebooks for this, the Jupyter notebooks, um, because you can do sort of like what I did in the, this example here, where we got, uh, where we were getting the movie information, and so we started out with a link tag, which had a whole bunch of information in it. So you can kind of see where you are at each point. Um, I'd say that is the biggest trick that I've found is just actually check your output on every single step and make sure you're getting what you think you're getting <laughs> and then run through, once you do it with one, with one item in your list, do it on 10 items in your list. Make sure you're still getting what you want and it's not like every 10th uh, link tag is a link to something you don't expect. <laughs> um, I don't think there's really an easier way of doing it. <laughs> yeah? Um, you knew how many pages you had to go through, right? That, that's why you were able to make that loop? Yeah, that's why I was able to make that loop. And the way I did that is I saw the URL, and I put in uh, 10, 5, <laughs> and set, you know, use binary search to figure out where the end was. <laughs> like you did that manually, right? I did, yeah. Um, I mean, one thing you could do is you could pull, uh, no, okay. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I mean, you can, what I, did when I, what I did when I was trying to do that is I would just write a loop and see when it failed. I haven't looked at that. I'll have to take a look at it and see if it does the same thing. Uh, I've also done something similar to this. Um, have you considered using Python Mechanize, um, which is basically a programmatic browser? So it mimics the, uh, the user agent, so you can actually mimic and pretend to be Firefox or Internet Explorer and use randomized timings to basically allow yourself to gather the data faster. Without um, having, so if you're gathering data at specific intervals, they can detect that, that your request time is coming in at regular intervals and block you there too. Okay, you yeah, know, no, I, ha I hadn't seen Mechanize. I'll have to look into that, mechanized. thank you. And there are also the issues of API keys and a few other thing, complexities to gathering the data that you unfortunately didn't cover, like JavaScript, stuff like that. Because not all the sites are very kind to web scrapers and that's sometimes intentional. Like single right. page applications, and with a, with mechanize, you can actually um, execute the JavaScript, click on the next links, and pull down the data. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. Great work. Uh, Hi, that was a great talk. Thank you. Um, so my question is like, so for something like the Oscars, uh, it's subjective, right? You have a, a set of voters, and like all those voters are white men. And so how can you um, try to maybe protect against like in increasing bias in like an analysis like this, or like say perpetuating it because like your input data is is biased, say like from lack of diversity. Yeah, um, that's a very good question. And I think there are people who are doing research into that specifically. Um, some ways that I could think of off the top of my head would be like um, perhaps weighting some groups of opinions more than others. Um, but then you're also running into bias there because you know if there are 
to uh, Asian Americans who you have data on, you might just be getting their personal opinions. Um, the short answer is, um, I think it's an excellent question and definitely worth looking more into. Any more questions or comments? No? Well, then just join me in thanking Hannah again. And thanks, everyone.